My name is Ellen Sachs, and I'm a professor of law, psychology, and psychiatry in the behavioral sciences at the USC Gold School of Law. I'm also a woman with chronic schizophrenia. The best description of a psychotic episode is like a waking nightmare with all the bizarre images, the you know, impossible things happening, and the utter, utter terror. I've come to say my mind is both my best friend and my worst enemy. So when I'm working, you know, the crazy ideas recede to the sideline, and I can focus on what I'm focusing on. So we got a call about seven in the morning. My husband picked it up and handed me the phone. He said, this is the MacArthur Fellowship. I said, you mean the Genius Grant, the Genius Grant? Yeah, yeah, we mean the Genius Grant. This is not a crank call, this is real. <laughs> and I thought, who would be so cruel as to do a crank call telling you you got a MacArthur? <laughs> but it was a great gift and I, I actually took the money and I started the Sachs Institute for Mental Health Law Policy and Ethics. And what we strive to do is ponder issues at the intersection of law, mental health, and ethics learn a lot about whatever we're studying and make recommendations for best practice. Our kind of motto is turning ideas into action. So we want to study important issues in mental health and mental health law and come up with things that can really help people in the world. We've been fortunate to have done that on a couple of occasions. Our topic on restraints, something that I found very traumatic, led uh, the Department of Mental Health in Los Angeles to start tracking, collecting data on restraints and stop using them on the outpatient level. I'm very excited that we're actually doing stuff that's making, making an impact. And I feel like, you know, I'm training the next generation of students to work at issues at the intersection of law and psychiatry. Meeting someone outside of my discipline, like Ellen, who cares so much about what I'm doing is, is amazing. When I was looking for help in doing research for my film, there wasn't there was some online resources, but there weren't too many people um, that I could go and talk to, and talking to her was a, it was a great resource that I was able to tap into. I think as you go along life, certain people touch you, and they're always gonna be with you. Everything we've been to up until this point, like, it's, it's, very, it's touched my soul, and I think it will show in my work. There's a need for new ideas, and, and for that reason, we need younger people who are gonna be able to be thinking about these things for a longer time. The Sachs Institute has been truly stunning in its uh, effectiveness and scope. She holds these events that uh, include both academics and practitioners and consumers and members of the public who interact with mentally ill people, but it's not their specialties to have serious academic work being shown to the people who can benefit from it. And in that way, she's a role model for all of us about how to make our academic work meaningful and useful to the community. I'm a professor and I'm a patient. I'm taking my experience to, uh, to try to think about these things and what would be the best and the right thing to do. Her research sensitizes us and it reminds us that just because you might have a mental illness, doesn't mean you're irrational. You're still a human being. You still have rights. And we have to respect that. Even if we as the professional may disagree, it tells us that the individual is in charge of their life and their destiny in achieving the best that they can be. I was subject to a lot of loss of liberty and dignity when I was a patient in the hospital. Having my autonomy taken away from me, losing my voice, it didn't matter what I think, it didn't matter what I wanted. Here's what you should do, do this. It's just, you know, demeaning and unhelpful. Outside of the hospital, my, my therapists have been extremely uh, good and generous and kind, and also willing to take a risk when I wasn't doing well to avoid hospitalizing me because they knew that was very much against my wishes. My more recent research has been in competency to make decisions about treatment, making a decision with the support of friends, family, and doctors. And I've designed a, a, an instrument to measure the appreciation component of competency, which we ran on several hundred patients. People who have impaired decisional capacity, but with the help and support of friends and family and caregivers can come to a reasoned decision. And so we're increasing the autonomy of people with mental health disorders. And choice is an integral part of being a human being, of being a person. And if they're given a voice, you know, they just may be more invested in what they decide to do and, and do it willingly and, and do it well. People with schizophrenia are thought to be really dangerous, even though the evidence is that mental health plays like a two to three percent contribution to violence. So that's one big misperception. 
Another is that, you know, people are can't work or they can't have relationships or they're scary or, oh my God, is it contagious? Coming to see mental health disorders as brain disorders doesn't much reduce stigma, but putting a human face on does. So the extent people come forward and tell their stories, that helps destigmatize more than more than anything else. I love roller skating. I actually take skating lessons twice a week, one at a rink and one on campus. I'm not very good, but I'm better than what we call round and rounders. I can backwards skate and I can you know, do crossovers and mohawks and other things like that. So I, I really do it for the exercise, but I like it as well. It really takes your mind off of things you may be worrying about and thinking about. I mean, you're just conscious on the steps and the beat for the music and not falling. <laughs> so it's refreshing to be in the moment.